everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a very odd piece of technology I purchased online about two weeks ago. It is this right here. Now you might be saying it just looks like a cheap old SSD. Well, let's take a closer look. The SSD is closed up right now by these screws right here. So there's four screws. I'm going to take them out and we're going to see if we could pop this open and see just what's inside. The screws have been loosened and it looks just like a regular SATA SSD, but there is a little board inside. If we pop this board out, you would see it is not a regular SSD and is in fact populated by SD cards. These were populated by me and these are just some off-brand 32 gigabyte cards, as we could see right there. When we add them all up, it makes, I think, about 128 gigabytes. Now, it's a very interesting card that, like I said, I bought online because I wanted to see what I can do with it, and I'm not even sure why this actually exists. So first, of, for a first experiment, I thought we'd try this on one of my newest purchases of Macs, a late 2012 iMac. The way I'm going to be trying it out is I'm going to be plugging it into one of these, you know, USB 3 to SATA adapters and we'll be plugging it into the back of the iMac. We're going to see if it's recognized on the iMac and then maybe if I can install an OS on this board. Not entirely sure. Let's give it a try. So I have just plugged in the USB, uh, the adapter with the cards. It's, as you can see right now on the screen, it says the disk is not readable. So if we choose to initialize it, so here it is. So it's FC1307 SD to CF adapter media. It's showing the entire disk or about the entire disk. So it's obviously rating them together. If we choose to erase it, let's leave it as master boot record, OS extended journal, erase. And we're gonna see if it works. So I unmounted it, created the partition map, formatted it, initialized it as 116 gigabyte, case sensitive HFS plus volume, and it says it's mounting the disk. So let's give it a minute, see what happens. Operation successful. Now, it says it's successful, but I'm not seeing the volume anywhere here. Right now, all hard disks, external disks, everything should be showing up. But as you can see, it seems to have disappeared. So it doesn't look like it likes the way I formatted it. Let's see if I could try this out on another machine. Well, that was extremely unsuccessful, but Supposedly this has been formatted. So what I'm going to try next is this is my 2008 MacBook. It already has an SSD in it But we're gonna see if I could swap it out if you've seen some of my other videos or one of my shorts This is without a doubt my favorite MacBook Being that you can actually remove the battery uh, and the hard drive or in this case SSD with not too much trouble So I'm gonna take out this quite cheap SSD and we're going to be putting an even cheaper SSD inside and see if we can install an OS and boot with it. Before I go any further, I know some people are going to comment, how come you're not showing us the upgrade? It's really quite simple. You just got to take this out. There is one bracket. There's another bracket that I didn't bother taking out all the way. One screw's missing. And then the, uh, the connectors right here. Just slide your drive onto it. Take these little standoffs, uh, I'm not sure how you call them, screws, whatever they are. They clip into the side here to hold the drive straight. There's another one that would go right there. It's still attached to the SSD right now. And then you put the whole thing back on. Uh, screw one, there's another screw right there, another screw right there that's still installed, and then put the bottom cover on. So it's a very easy peasy operation. So here's an interesting development. So I put in that screw right there uh, I've taken the board apart, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but these little copper pieces, I'm guessing, are not in properly all the way, so I cannot get any of the other ones to go in. They're slightly off kilter, so I'm going to see what I can do 
going to kind of see it on that one right there to push them all the way down because whatever manufacturer put this together, they simply did not do a good job with straightening this out. That certainly was a new one. Okay, so we have this all straightened up. As you can see, it's a little banged up. Oops. But it's just going on internally. With the help of my friend Brute Force, I was able to put on those screws, those standoffs. If you haven't met my friend, he is right here. He is an old classic tool that I use. So we're going to put this back together and then I'm going to install it into the 2008 MacBook. And here it is all hooked up. I hooked it to power just in case the battery wasn't very good. We're going to see if this machine even still starts up. Three, two, one. So we have power. Now it should not find anything to boot off of. If it does, I'd be blown away because there's no drive in there but one that is completely empty. But what we're going to do is we're going to use everybody's favorite OS, Snow Leopard. So first of all, we are going to put it in as I switch hands and hope for the best. Read the disc. Gotta love that sound. Hopefully it will spin up very soon. And it is. Don't know if you could hear it, but the drive is spinning up like a helicopter right now. So it found the DVD. And what we're going to do, we're going to give it a minute. It's going to load up and then we're going to see if we can still find the drive. And we are back. So we're in the installer. I'm going to select use English. And we're going to hope that it could find the drive. So first of all, I'm going to see if I can select utilities and go to disk utility. And let's cross our fingers. Will this show up? We didn't have much luck with the 2012 iMac. Spinning, spinning, spinning. And here's the drive right here. So as you can see, it's registering right there. The capacity, it's Mac OS Extended Journal. And we're going to see if I can install Mac OS on this thing. So we'll click continue. Excuse the shaking. I'm doing this with one hand. We're going to agree. We're going to click here. Um, oh, we need to use GUID. So we're going to try utilities, disk utility. We might, we're going to have to format this again. Let's go erase. We'll try that again. Actually, let's see if we get it done. And it keeps trying to do MS DOS. Partitioning. Let's click on the partition. And it seems to be fine. Let's try this again. Yeah, now it's showing up just fine. That's very strange. So we'll click install. We'll give it a second just to see if the installation will start. But I'm not going to record the whole thing because it's a very long install time. Is it not checking the disk? I guess not. So when we come back, I'll cut to the end of the installation. And the install is successful. It is about to restart. That took an 
awful long time to finish. So let me just see if I can just eject this disc so we know that we're not booting off of that. Get out of there. There. So that should spit it out. And it is booting to Mac OS 10.6. Or at this point it should be. So let's see what happens. Again, this is marketed as an SSD. It has 128 gigabytes of storage. So we have a little spinning. It's thinking. And I might have to mute very soon if this does boot because we do not want the sound on the video. How much longer? Oh, so it switched. Hello world. Nice to see you. And that'll be that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to set this up. So I'm going to do all the settings about the username and all that. And then we're going to see if we can get it booted to the desktop. And we are booted into the OS. So as you can see here in the corner, we have the drive. It is showing up with everything you'd expect a fresh install of 10.6 to have. We'll go to about this Mac. There we go. So four gigs of RAM and there's the CPU with 10.6 exactly. And then if we go onto the drive, there's the adapter and there is the capacity. So the smart status is verified and it seems to be showing up just fine. So it is a three gigabit connection. I believe that's SATA 2, SATA 2. Uh, if I'm wrong, just leave it in the comments below. And we're gonna see, we're do a little bit of a speed test on this. So I'm gonna get an application installed and see if it was actually worth doing this, call it SSD installation on this MacBook. To run the benchmarking, what we're gonna use is this application called Xbench. It works just fine. Uh, for this purposes. So we're going to remove everything, the graphics tests, because I don't think any of this will change, obviously. Uh, so we just have the disk test. It is going to be run on Unentitled, as I have not changed the name. And we're going to see the speed of this. So we're going to click Start. And when this is done, I'm going to show you the results. The test is done. Now, I'm just going to let you know, these are not the test results of the new SSD, as we call it. This is the original one. This is the one right over here, the Torosis solid state drive. So here are all the results that it got and it did pretty well considering. So if we just move this to the side and compare, here we go. So overall score of the new SSD with the four uh, micro SD cards is 22.79 with the other SSD or the real SSD, 390.97. And if we look at some of these scores, so for example, uh, I don't know, this test, 22.79, 390 right there, but the uncached right over here with 4K blocks, many, many times better for every single thing here. So while that four block, four micro SD card SSD drive works, it definitely does not have the power or the speed that you'd be looking at to run your computer. And there you go. So without going any deeper into testing this storage, I'm pretty sure we could all see that it's definitely not worth it. I paid probably too much for what it is. Just those SD cards alone are a pretty penny. And it's really not something that I'd recommend to anybody. It was just a lark. I thought I'd buy it, try it out, and it failed miserably. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.